please be uh, courteous in that regard. Uh, well, let me just start. We have uh, Jonathan Rice, who goes by the name of the moniker of J.R. Rice, and he'll tell you more about that. Uh, but in his description, his self-description, and remember what kind of class, what the class we we're in, we're in African diaspora music class, uh, is, is uh, he describes himself as a black man, an educator, a spoken word, word artist, uh, he, uh, a proud uh, inhabitant of Oakland, California. He works and teaches in Oakland, California at the high school level. He's a graduate of a, of a Cal State University uh, in Long Beach. Long Beach? Long Beach, okay. And uh, he's gonna share with you uh, some of his work. He has some of the work here in front of uh, uh, the table here. He's a published author. Uh, he has a book coming out uh, June. June. Uh, but he ha also he has uh, four publications prior to that. Uh, participates. How many of you are familiar with spoken word poetry? I mean, okay, you're going to get a treat this afternoon. And um, one of the things I want you to think about what does poetry have to do with this class? Mm. What does it have to do with music in general? Okay, and uh, because it's a relevant notion, but I want you to think about what it is. One of the notions that we did talk about in the class is metaphor, and oftentimes poetry uh, uses metaphor. But music does too. I don't want to give you all the answers to my, my question, but what, do they have, what does it have to do with the class, okay? And that's something I want you to think about. Uh, I see, um, would you do me a favor? You put your, you put your the date and, um, and let's pass this around for attendance. Everybody sign it, okay? And what I, I will want to admonish you all of whether we have a speaker or not, we can be on time, okay? All of, how many of you have a job? How many of you have a job? Okay. And so you have a job, I'm, I'm guessing that you don't punch the clock five, ten minutes after, right? When you should be doing the thing, right? I can't afford to do that. You know, this is my job too. So let, let's just make that a practice and not make it a thing, okay? So we have different people. Uh, I've invited some other folks to come in and uh, it's good to see you here, all right? From other classes as well as faculty from other classes. So, uh, let me see, one more thing. I did say Oakland, California, didn't I? Oakland! Oaktown, okay. <laughs> West Side, okay. <laughs> I'm very proud of being from Oakland, okay. For all the challenges that we have in Oakland, California, I'm very proud of the creative people there, uh, I have family there, and um, it's a pretty dynamic place, okay? And, uh, but without further ado, I'd like to give a hand for J.R. Rice. Twice. J. 
Jay. Rice. Jay. Rice. Yeah. How we feeling? Good. We good? We good. Good. Good to see all your beautiful faces. Um, y'all welcome to move up closer. There's some embassies over here. There's some embassies over here. Embassies. Yeah, they're just begging for a butt to sit in, somebody sit in. Um, so thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for um, for your time. I really appreciate this. Uh, so y'all looking at me like, who the heck is this guy? Uh, I am an English teacher. Ooh. Thanks. <laughs> I am a broke author. Yeah. And I'm a sex symbol with a bipolar disorder. Yeah, sex and bipolar. Hey, um, so I am up here. I came out with two books about two years ago. Um, I, the first book is called I Was, I Am, I Will Be. I have two books in the series. Each of them only $5. Everybody say, only $5. Ooh, only $5. Yeah, you can afford that for $5. Uh, feel free to check me out after the, um, after the set. Um, I'll be willing to sell some books and sign them for you. Also, I wanted to get, do a book giveaway towards the end, towards uh, for some special people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I am very, very humble, very honored to be here. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, so, I wanted to do... so. A little bit about who I am, a little bit more about who I am. I'm a storyteller. I love to tell stories. Any storytellers in the house? Anybody love storytelling? Just a few? <laughs> um, so, just uh, in terms of just spoken word, spoken word is, um, is, a, is an art that kind of goes all the way back to like the beginning of the times. If you think about all different cultures, black culture, African culture, Japanese culture, Indian culture, all these different cultures, they have storytellers. And so, like even with your favorite music, it all begins with just storytelling. So what I wanted to do today is just continue that oral tradition. And just think like all the stories, all the knowledge that we have, it was carried on from our ancestors through uh, generations and generations of storytellers. So what I wanted to do for y'all in real time, give y'all that carry on the world tradition. Is that all right? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So y'all feel free to record me. Feel free to clap your hands. Feel free to shout. Um, yeah, yeah, we get engaged. Um, so I'm going to do a few pieces for y'all. Also, after each piece, what I'll do, I'll stop. And if, um, and also I'll take some questions from, from you, if you guys have anything you're curious about. Yeah. Come on in. Don't be scared. Hi. How are you? Great. Hey, this is C right here. Your front row C, VIP. How you doing? Good, you yourself? I'm, I'm well. You're, you're an A's fan. No. No? But you got the hat. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm actually from Oakland. Oh, yeah? Who's yeah. That? Sacramento. Nice, nice. Um, so you like you don't even, you know what's going on, huh? It's all good. Uh, I'm Jay Rice. Jay Rice. Name so nice, you got to say it. Twice. Ah, good. Is football play? Huh? You name it for the football play? The who? The football player, Jerry Rice? No, that's my uncle. That was Jerry Rice. <laughs> what do you say? I'm, I'm Jerry Rice. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, that's actually my uncle. Yeah, we're going way back. I'm, I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> um, can I do more poetry for y'all? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Like the youth said, a dream deferred is a dream denied. But such a right can only occur if you dream one life. I had a dream once. When I was young and dumb and heroic, I, I wanted to become a poet, but no normal poet. A poet, Ninja Turtle, Urkel, rapper. With a flow like Coolio, you know? Because, because everyone remembers Coolio. No? Yeah. My goal was to spend all my life living in the gangsta's paradise, eating sewer pizza slices, Wearing suspender straps and glasses, opening a door hardcore like, ooh, did I know that? Type of poet, Ninja Turtle, Urkel, rapper. Only problem was, my book needed to grow more chapters. So I went around the town to show what I gathered, twirling around a yardstick as though I was some kind of bow master. No, 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 happily ever after. When I told my dreams to people in laughter who said mean things like, you're too black to be green, or 
Why a black boy want to be green? Or when you're black, there's no in between. I, I, I kept my dreams hidden so they wouldn't be seen or forgiven, given, given, given. That's not the right way of living. I am living the answer to a dream deferred. It's a dream denied. A failed soul inside this Shakespearean prison like these ordinary people. I too wither in reality until falling ill, literally feeling deaf, dumb, and blinded by double, 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 double consciousness, interpreting conflict signs as if there's some kind of difference between today I'm okay versus I'm always just okay. Langston Hughes said, a dream deferred is a dream denied, so I cry and cry and cry every time I wake up to this life of mine. Poem. That was a piece that kind of was inspired by a, a quote from one of my favorite poets named Langston Hughes. Anyone familiar with that guy? Yeah? Um, a question to you, anyone in the audience, anyone brave. Um, was there a story to that piece where you got a message? Really? Oh, great. We got hands. We got brave people. Uh, hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Masher. Nice to meet you. Say that again. Masher. Masher. Yes. That's an original man. Yeah, Masher, uh, please, um, what do you think? Um, I think the story was you listen to people doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. You kind of started doubting yourself because they were doubting you. After you told them, like, oh, this is what I want to do. And you kind of, like, looked in yourself and, like, damn, I feel like how they're telling me. But then you kept going regardless. Yeah, yeah. People didn't have faith in me. Wanted to become a Ninja Turtle. Yeah, people just laugh, see? Like, that's my dream. I'm still working on it. It's okay, I've been calling the Ninja Turtles. Yeah? Are you working on it? No. Oh. Only when I play football. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Masher. Masher. I'll get it right. right. Just think of mashed potatoes at your ER. Gotcha. With gravy? Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what's your name? My name's William. Nice to meet you. Hi, William. Uh, what I was getting from that was similar to Masher in the sense that. You express your dream, you are proud of it at first, people doubt you, they tell you that you're not able to do these things because mm -hmm. of how you are, but pushing through it is something that you need to do regardless. A dream deferred is a dream denied. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Can I give you all some more? More poetry? Yeah. More yeah. More poetry? Oh, my bad, there was another hand. Another hand? Yeah? yeah. Sorry, did, I'm, my bad. I'm a teacher too, so I'm open to sharing. Um, what, what's your name? Malia. Malia. Hi, Malia. Um, what was your thoughts about that piece? Um, my initial thought was um, the desire to, you have the desire to be so many different things at once, mm -hmm. and the world somehow tells you that you couldn't be any of them. So, and then dealing with the constant struggle of feeling that way every single day of your life is a lot of weight to carry. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's great. That's great. Um, I'm gonna keep it going. I'm gonna keep it going. So this next piece is called um, it's called affirmations. Any any writers in the house? Anybody identify themselves as a writer? Just one? That's all right. That's all right. Um, so I often struggle, just with the last piece, I often struggle with kind of um, figuring out what's my purpose? Why am I doing this? Why am I writing? Why am I even here? Why am I performing for y'all? And so when I have these doubts, um, I often gotta do my affirmations. And so I put that together in this piece. So this piece is called Why Write? I write, I write, I write because at 14, a friend heard me read love poetry about a heart in me. You see, at the time, his heart was at a loss to breathe. In his mind was the right thought to proceed and still in my lines and offering them off to she. 
he told me. No suicide to my heart and me. She's alive because your love poem brought relief. So, all right, all right, all right, because once upon a time I was a lost body. Teenage veins ran trains of painful speech. Until my 12th grade English teacher taught me how to train the beast. She gave me a pen and pad with a task after class and said, here's your chain and leash. Go release those highs and lows and in-betweens and then you'll see all your pain put at ease. So, all right, all right, all right, because my right fist represents the cut wrist and hand slit of over a million and one slaves forced off hardships. Their privilege to write and read was stripped. So I write and read everything for everyone missed because without them, I wouldn't exist. So I write, I write, I write because I'm from East Oakland. The Bay A, bruh where the murder rate stays at a constant pace, bruh, of someone killed nearly every other day, bruh. Man, my birthplaces are hurt, ache, paints and walls cracked into madness, though all would gather in sadness to believe they did everything differently, when in fact, ain't nothing changed, bruh. So, all right, all right, all right, because the moment of relief I receive from completing a written piece and similar to taking a dump. <laughs> Ooh, after it's been about a week. But not like a sense of relief in the beliefs that 9% of the globe goes to sleep with nothing to eat, no relief. When firefighters, teachers, doctors, police, or lesson entertainers and athletes, no relief. When more blacks and browns in jails than excelling in college, no relief. When all I see is wealth is health by the ignorant ingest fake knowledge. So, all right, all right, all right, because I don't know how to write right. When what's left is right, then death strikes and I'm left to write about the loss of life. Yet, if I didn't write, I'd have lost my life to suicide. So, who am I to choose sides and cross lines of do or die? Why do I recite lines like an Albert can move tight? The meaning of life is whatever reason you have not to kill yourself. Do I write for self? As a cry for help, do I write tasty trash for massive shelves? Do I write for relief from the beast deeply held? Do I write for the kids who died at the end when no one else? So I write, I write, I write, why, write, why, write, why, write. Thank you. I just got a lot of like 
you find strength in writing, even if it's just a pen and paper, as simple as a pen and paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know if y'all peeped the first part. Um, uh, I started off by saying um, at 14, a friend heard me read, love poetry, a lot of heart in me. Um, crazy story, this really happened. Um, yeah, when I was uh, 14, I was writing love poetry, just trying to get girls, and most of the time it worked. Um, I had a friend, he had his, his girlfriend, and she was going through a whole bunch of issues, and she was uh, threatening to kill herself. And then um, he knew I was a poet, and he knew I was writing in the same notebook, and I was sharing my, my love poetry to him. I'm just kind of weird, though, but yeah. I was sharing it to him, and he was like, man, yeah, you got some good stuff, you got some good stuff. And then he ended up stealing one of my love poems. And I uh, ripped it out of my journal, ended up giving it to his girl, and um, that cheered her up. And that ended up changing her mind. And he told me that, he told me that story, and I didn't, I didn't, uh, it was just crazy for me, because I love poem, it was like some really cheesy crap. It was like, roses are red, you look cute too, something like that. But it, it worked for her. It worked for her enough to change her mind. And so, I just, uh, I think back on that time, like even with y'all, what you do with your writing or your art or whatever creative expression your thing is, just keep in mind that it might not be so meaningful to you, but it might be really meaningful to someone else. And maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that your work could save somebody's life. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, even though it's just one writer, I know I'm pretty sure all of y'all are creative in some way. Yeah. Uh, y'all want some more poetry? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm about to get a bit heavy though. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this piece. So I like I like storytelling. So this piece is uh, another story. This piece is called um, Little Malcolm, or <clears throat> Fifth Grief and MacArthur. <sighs> Little Malcolm, please don't die. Everybody's wishing for you to stay alive. You were just a boy riding his bike. The car screeched. Then bullets started to fly. Not the same ride. Oh God, please don't end his life. It ain't his time. I remember dealing with the slimes, <laughs> shooting crops, living to do crime shit. We robbed everything from Best Buy to Office Max, but nah, we never get caught to do time. We used to jack fake thugs clothes right off their backs. We had some beef with some dudes down the street because they kept talking smack. Yo, one night I heard them shoot off rounds of heat, but nah, I wasn't afraid. Instead, I, I was just mad, so it just took me a while to sleep. So I confronted them the next day, told them, everything about you is fake. <laughs> they started bragging. I said, man, prove what you say. They left laughing. Later, they came back packing. <laughs> When I was walking back to my house, I heard the power of the Mac-10. So, you know, I ducked out. And riding his bike towards me was little Malcolm. Before I realized what happened, they shot him. They shot him. They shot him. Man, I must have got his neighbors, family, friends, police. I got anyone to help his body off these cold streets. We rushed him to the Kaiser. We rushed him to the Highland Hospital. His mama was yelling to the doctor, this can't be possible. The bleeding was almost unstoppable. I even whispered to his ear, don't stop breathing. Don't stop breathing. Don't stop breathing. Little Malcolm, please don't die. Everybody's wishing for you to stay alive. You are just a boy riding this bike, the car screech. Then bullets started to fly, now this ain't right. Oh God, please don't end this life. You can take mine. I apologize. I shouldn't have provoked those guys. When the bullets try to shoot up at me on the other side, not you. And I can't take seeing your closed arms. I can't take seeing your folks cry. You're too young and I won't let your soul fly. My heart is breaking apart and all these people know why. We want you to live, little monk. Please don't die. 
Please don't die. Please. Go. Oh. Home. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what do y'all think that one was about? Take a minute to digest it. So, just a background on that. Um, that uh, uh, that never happened to me. I, um, I've never seen any drive-bys or anything. Um, that was actually uh, one of my students' stories that they shared to me. Yeah. Um, any idea of what the message was with that piece? Yeah, go ahead, two times. Um, I feel like the message with that is to be aware, of, be aware of the consequences of your actions and your words because if you mess with the wrong people, something bad is bound to happen, even if it's not your intention for it to affect other people. Yeah. Well said. Any other thoughts? Yes, please. Is, um, is guilt a part of the story? Yeah. And um, for, the, for the student who was telling the story? Yeah. Um, yeah, and he still lives with that, um, that regret. Um, yeah. Y'all want some more? Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah? That's going to get even heavier. Y'all ready for some more heavy stuff? Yes, yeah, I know. We got tissue somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Um, oh, all right, let's do this. I haven't done this piece in a long time. You'll see why. Um, all right, so I, uh, I attend this, I, I'm a teacher in Oakland uh, at a continuation school. It's a, yeah, I've been teaching there uh, about three years. Um, two years ago, uh, two years ago at my school, there was a mass shooting in which um, two teenage boys came onto my campus um, with semi-automatic weapons and they shot uh, six people. Um, one was my colleague, uh, one was my student, and another one um, was our custodian. Uh, he, uh, he later passed away from his injuries. So, um, this piece is called Righteous Rage, and um, one dedicated to David Zachariah. Uh, so the piece is called Righteous Rage, or PTSD. September 28, 2022, Wednesday, 1245 p.m. Yeah, 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 yeah! Watch out, everybody, get down now! Shot, shot, play in the lobby. Shot, shot, main six bodies. Pop, pop, sang some of our oddies. Listen, everybody, lock down now! Drop to the floor, lock the doors, let the knots go ignored. Stay still, this is not a drill. Chill, chills I feel from surreal text with. It's real, the bill to grief. Feels and sinks as time stands still and shrinks. I can hardly think as each second weeks, as each minute speaks until an hour creeps by when shit happens like a climactic action. Doors blasted off the hinges, falls in my senses as three relentless cops rushed into the entrance. Guns lifted and directed at my position as if scripted. Hands up, hands up. My arms reached for the sky. Don't move, don't move, my body frozen like ice. Outside, outside, my legs barely alive, walking with a sigh toward the front, feeling crushed by the school I loved. Walls torn up with bullet slugs, floor filled up with pools of blood. Oakland afternoon disrupt with streets flooded by armored trucks. Swat team erupts with guns out the trunks. From above, where choppers around the sun, from below, where the savages would become, in the end, no one won. Who am I? P T 
PTSD, powerless, terrified, spiteful, defeated by demons which haunt this life of mine for my happily ever after gets denied where ever apathy's disaster must reside and sadly measures factors to my demise. These chapters I describe have no oh, laughter to prescribe. So who decides if we truly matter in God's scatter design? Are we only defined by society's confines? Like a student of mine who just wanted to shine, a boy so divine who had begun his prime, now the sum of crime, gunned down by two slimes within the drum line of an eye for an eye. Where can he find his peace of mind? and live long enough to eat his feast and dine within a beast that is mankind. What kind of man doesn't understand how to feel or how the effects of the real or how easy it is to kill and so hard to heal when all will is lost by the slightest danger will, will all be lost from righteous anger? No, no, no. If all will is lost from the slightest danger, will all be lost from righteous anger? No. If all will is lost from the slightest danger, will all be lost from righteous anger? I don't know. Thank you. Cool. Oh, man. I need a shower after this. <laughs> um, um, uh, what do y'all think was the message of that one? <clears throat> take, take a second to digest that. So it's called Righteous Rage. Um, here, my bad. Let me ask you all. We, didn't, we get personal. Um, anybody in here been affected by gun violence? Interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I've had a number of times when I was actually affected by gun violence. Uh, in that case, uh, yeah, my student is fine. He, he was hospitalized for about a year, but uh, he made a return. And so was my colleague. And we, um, we actually created a garden at my school and dedicated it to, uh, to David Zachariah. And the um, crazy, crazy thing is they still haven't found the, the shooters. Yeah, it's been two years. Uh, yes? Could you uh, expand on the line of to eat his feast? Uh, long enough to eat his feast and dine within the beast that is mankind. To eat his feast and dine. So, uh, my student, he was. Uh, so my, I feel like my student, he, um, given his circumstances and his situation in life, he, I don't feel like he was given a very equal, equitable chance of, to eat his piece of cake. To eat to enjoy his life the way that the rest of us do. So when I say like feast and dine, I was just like, he didn't get his chance and he's struggling. And he has to live with that same traumatic experience every day and it's gonna follow him. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what that line means. Um, any other thoughts? While y'all stare at me sweating. <clears throat> any questions? Yes, please. What's your name? Keone. Keone? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, to clarify, would you say that you're angry at your inability to do anything? Mm -hmm. What do you think righteous rage means? You're, you're angry. You're... So I actually got the title because um, when after the incident, um, we had some um, like spiritual healers come to our campus and try to bless the spot. And one of the ladies there, she was talking about how all of us were filled with this righteous anger, this righteous rage. And uh, she explained it for me, it's like, all of us feel rage. How many of y'all go through road rage? You're honking, you're about to get out of your, your car, about to stop with some dude out, something like that. So we all go through this rage, but with righteous rage, the way she explained it is just justified anger. It's like, 
you got this intense anger and it's justified because uh, something something crazy happened but it's not like an anger or a hatred it's just an anger towards this wrong so for me that's what righteous rage means uh, other questions? Yes, please. I was going to ask, does it have two titles? Because you said PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. Um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to get real personal. I had to go, I was, um, so after that incident, I didn't go back to work for three months. I was, I was paranoid. Uh, I didn't even leave my house, my apartment for like a week. Um, and so uh, the PTSD part, that uh, I had to actually, all of the teachers, and all the staff, we had to get cleared to go back to work. So I had to go through a therapeutic evaluation, had to be evaluated, and they just, they clarified, they said that I had PTSD. And for me, uh, that uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, but for me it was feeling just powerless, spiteful, terrified, and defeated. So PTSD for me, that was, that was, what I was feeling. But I'm feeling a lot better now. Yeah, therapy, therapy is good. Anybody in therapy? Don't be ashamed. Yeah, good job. You're doing good. Yeah. Uh, more questions? <clears throat> yes, please. Um, you What's your name? Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Um, can you expand on the line, no one wins? Um, no one won in that situation. You could say the two boys who came on campus, um, they were actually looking for someone in particular, and they ended up just shooting at everyone. They didn't win. Um, the school didn't win. The police didn't win. They didn't find the killer. Um, they, so in, in this kind of situation, there's uh, nobody won. There was no positive result in this. Um, we got like a Wikipedia page, and we had a GoFundMe. Uh, that's about it. But in this case, in, in a lot of cases with gun violence, like nobody wins, even the shooters. <clears throat> More questions? How do y'all feel about gun violence? Got question. Or how do y'all feel about mass shootings? <clears throat> so that shit's real. Uh, yes, please. There was some game to win, like nobody wins. Um, so I think, regardless of the situation, like it's just nobody wins in this situation. Um, but that's a term that I've recently been coming up with a lot. Like oh, I've been hearing a lot of zero sum games. Like it's a, uh, it's when neither side wins and mm -hmm. both pretty much are just destroyed. So yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. And um, the crazy thing, especially with, uh, I, I, I see you, um, crazy, in Oakland, uh, LA, everywhere you go, you have the cycle of violence, or this eye for an eye thing. And what, uh, what happened at my school was more or less an eye for an eye thing. And so this, this cycle of violence that goes on, like uh, I kill your brother, so then you, you come around and you try to kill my brother. And then we just keep at it, go kill. And this cycle, cycle, cycle just keeps going. And it's, and you say it's an eye for an eye, but when does it stop? When does it stop? And this is not just going on in Oakland and in the city, this is everywhere. This is everywhere. And I, I struggle with myself, like how, when does it stop? When do you say like enough is enough? When we're gonna say like, like fuck this eye for an eye shit. Like, can we just have some peace? I don't know the answer. Uh, hey, you got a question? Uh, not so much questions, Go ahead. more so thoughts on subjects. Um, like, there are just lots of thoughts going through my head. Um, so I understand feeling rage towards someone or being so upset with circumstance that you want to do something about it. Taking the life of someone just seems so bizarre to me because maybe it's just me, but like in the grand scheme of things, like this person has lived on this earth for years now. And in just a single muscle twitch, you can put almost two whole decades of life dedication 
effort, love, and sometimes even sadness to an end. Yeah. And even if the person doesn't immediately die, it's it's an experience that doesn't just go away. Yes. Yeah. And um, is not only victim is affected, but the victim's family, the victim's friends, the victim's neighbors, the victim's community, everybody gets affected. So yeah, when you take one life, you're not just taking that life, you're taking countless others. It's just, it takes a lot to build, and yet it's so simple and easy to destroy. Yeah. Um, can I do another one? Yeah, y'all looking all sad. <laughs> mm. Should I do a happy poem? Yeah, nah, maybe. Happy. <laughs> nah, fuck that. Um, hey, you said I could curse, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, um, How much time I got? 20? How about Less? another five minutes or so? Are you serious? Well, no, I mean, you can have the whole afternoon. Uh, can I do two more? Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, let's keep let's go with more. Y'all ready for more heavy stuff? Y'all, yeah. you got your tissue. You're gonna eat ready. Mm, give me that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Oh man. Okay. All right. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. My uh. My dad passed away um, eight years ago cancer and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and uh, this is the poem he never got to read it's called uh, last letter dear Papa bear your life ain't been no crystal stair Based on the stories you often shared, once you go off and stare, then words start to appear like back in my day. And at first I'd laugh, but after 35 years have passed, I've memorized every song from your past. I fear the day your mind will grow gray, my once familiar face will wither away from memory, and the repeated question of, do you remember me, Dad? Do you remember me, Father? Do you remember me, Papa? We'll roll in your corner conscious like a centipede. This is me, your junior, your firstborn, torn from my mama's stomach, not the womb. My little brother and I made your dreams come true in my nightmares. Your brown eyes turned into a cold blue. In my reality, disease destroyed the strong man I once knew. Retire to a sinking seat, so weak yet so relaxed, you'd ask, my boy, why you look so sad? Because I watch your head twitch and handshake as you repeat everything previously said, and you'd ask, my boy, why you look so sad? Because I wonder how long this condition will last, as if one day you snap out this illness and return to my old dad, and you'd ask, my boy, why you look so sad? Because I still carry the bag of memories you once had. Do you remember Lake Tahoe? The last memory of when our family was whole. You had said, son, behold, this is snow. Just like man's hair, even the green earth can turn white. You said, don't fight in the room of darkness, find the light. You said, learn from your wrong, so what's left. So learn from your wrong, so what's left is right. You said, though life is short, no matter the length of your life, I support. Life is loss, and life is love. Life is God, and everything above. Then you cried and said, don't be afraid when death comes. Don't run when death comes. No! True death arrives when the last person to remember you dies. No! True death arrives when the last person to remember you dies. And due to all your present ties, Papa Bear, you will live beyond like times, Papa Bear. Somehow, 
some way you have predicted this day when I was staring into a blank face, tracing signs of a future path, playing the grave. And you say, my boy, why you look so sad? Because back in my day, things were so, so bad. I try to laugh. I try so goddamn bad to laugh, but I can't. Because back in my day, back in my day, you were just my old dad. I miss you. Thank you. Any thoughts on that one? Anybody, uh, anybody uh, lose your parents? Do something? Yeah, we all know how it is. Anybody lost someone they loved? Y'all know about grief, and it's hard. I know um, you only grieve for the ones you love. You only grieve for the ones you love. So if you feel hurt, if you feel that longing for that person, that means you love them. Even if it was your pet, uh, whoever it was, if you grieve, that means you love them. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. What's your name? My name's Nevin. What? I'm sorry. Is that again? Nevin. Nevin. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two reasons about sharing thoughts about grief home. Um, something that resonated with with me was the use of repetition, um, especially with the lines of question that your dad would ask you about what's wrong with this dad. And I can, that definitely resonates with me. Um, I had a similar experience with somebody who had Alzheimer's, so you deal with that constant, them asking the same question, but you know, having that patience and having that grace to still respond in the same manner because, you know, they deserve that. Yeah. So that was, that was something that really resonated with me. Thank you. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, that was something he would often ask a lot, and I had to repeat my same answer. He would confuse me with my brother, too. Um, yeah, he would forget my name. It was, it was a lot. Um, yeah, I was with them. We had stage four uh, prostate cancer. I was with them for the last days. I remember our last, the last movie we saw was Grease, Grease 2. Um, I was like, man, this is a horrible movie. <laughs> uh, that was the last movie we saw, yeah. Um, yeah, any other questions, thoughts? No? Yes, I like your hat. Okay. Yeah, you work uh, at UPS? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, That's a great place. I uh, thought uh, you used a lot of imagery mm -hmm. you know, for your poems, how you describe like, you know, the trips you have with your dad and how they reflected the good times and, you know, that you never, you never had those times again. I mean, yeah. I too lost my dad almost seven years ago. Sorry. Due to a liver failure, and mm -hmm. so I mean, during his last days, I kind of reflected on the past, and uh, I'll never get to revisit that. So I thought that using imagery was kind of therapeutic for your poetry. I really just like that. Thank you. Thank you. No one ever truly dies. The true death arrives when the last person to remember you dies. As long as you keep people alive in your memory, they never really die. Uh, can I give y'all one more? Just one more? Is that right? Just one more? I know you're getting bored. I can see your faces. Yeah. Um, hey, um, I've been hurt. Um, I've been damaged. Raise your hand if you've ever been hurt. Raise your hand if you've ever been damaged. Yeah, this piece is for you. You are what remains from damage. Through this pain, you managed to gain an understanding. Your name is no longer damaged. You are what remains from damage. Through this pain, you managed to gain an understanding. Your name is no longer damaged. Your life is for living. Yeah, everybody, just repeat that. Your life is for living, meaning more than survival. Rising above idle or suicidal, 
in reaching your arrival of self-actualization. You see, once in extension, you live for different reasons. You might change with the seasons, or you might stay the same with deeper feelings, like seeking your soulmate get found, or leading future minds toward a better now. Your living doesn't mean hanging in on the cliff upside down, nor hating every upside or, or down that exists. So, so what is living your bliss? Hey, someone, someone asked, what is living your bliss? Thank you. Finding the right roles for yourself, traveling the right road by yourself, and knowing that with just a little help, you can achieve the chosen goals for yourself. No, hope won't be easy. And yes, hard pain will be felt. But above all else, your living will leave a lasting legacy and a crafty elegy for all the seeing and self revelry. There I lived on an edge advanced, descended, and impacted the earth's bank. Here I remain to regain above this damage and pain. Hey, people, people, repeat after me. I am. I am. Oh, louder, louder. I am. I am. What remains, what remains. From, damage. from damage through this pain, through this pain. I, managed I managed to gain, to gain. an understanding. My name, is, My name is no longer damaged. No longer damaged. Who, am I? Who am I? I am free. I am free. Who am I? I am free. I am free. Who am I? Who am I? I am free. I am free. Who am I? I am me. I am me. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate y'all patience. Thank y'all for allowing me to be vulnerable. Uh, as I said, I'm Jay Rice. Jay Rice, name so much, you gotta say it. Wow. Oh, Feel free to follow me. Uh, also, I got books out. Uh, this uh, beautiful person without the face, that's actually me. That's a book cover. Uh, feel free to check me out uh, online. You can buy my books. Um, also, sorry, I'm out of breath. Uh, I'm coming out with a novel in June, it's called Broken Pencils. It's gonna be nationwide, I'm also gonna go on a book tour this summer. <laughs> Feel free to check out the book, it is, um, anyone read Catcher in the Rye? All right, so I did the black version of Catcher in the Rye, <laughs> uh, set in Oakland. <laughs> it's called Broken Pencils, that's the easiest way I can explain it. Uh, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy story, feel free to, just, we're doing pre-orders right now, it's gonna come out in June. So yeah, follow me, check me out. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are great. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Um, hey, I did want to do a book giveaway. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, what's the best way I could? Should I, how should I? I wanted to give it to the person who participated the most. And it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how about this? Uh, if you stay around, I'll sign it for you. I'm going to give you book one. And then I'm going to give you book two. OK? Enjoy. It's an easy read. Um, also, if anyone else would like to buy some books and ask for my craft, uh, also, you order online. Um, yeah, any, any other questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. If anybody else wants to offer. Huh? If anybody wants to offer. Gotcha. Any, any questions? And yes. Please. Uh, how are you feeling after all of that heavy poetry? Uh, I need a shower. To be <laughs> um, no, I, I um, all those pieces I shared with y'all, I, I actually rarely do it because um, it, it kind of is a little bit triggering. But um, I say whatever your your thing is, if it's sports, if it's writing, if it's art, like use that as a, as a tool. Like writing, like in my first piece, affirmation, writing saved my life. Um, and uh, I would probably not, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably not be here if it was for writing. So um, I just want to encourage y'all, like, keep up whatever you're doing, uh, whatever your talent, whatever your passion is, follow that. And also just keep in mind, like, your gifts, it might not be super important to you, but just your gifts and your efforts can make a big, big difference in somebody else's life. Um, you writing some simple poem or you drawing some simple artwork 
somebody else sees that and that, that gives them some meaning to life. So just, I just hope, I just want to push you all just keep doing what you're doing and uh, value yourselves and value your, your work. Yeah. Love y'all. Y'all you're cool. <laughs> y'all cool people. Yeah. Thank you. Should we do the reveal? Oh, yeah. Any idea? Y'all know? Did he tell you how he knows me? I'm his son. Ah, grandson. Yeah, it's clear close. Um, no, we're related. Oh, okay. I'm I'm the handsome one. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I keep my hair, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate you all uh, coming and being here and asking questions and reflecting. I was looking around the room and seeing people, you know, in it. And, uh, and I'm sure John appreciates that. The, uh, I certainly do. Uh, you know, the, he's engaging. Would you all agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. And, and I, I encourage you to challenge poetry, you know, and think about the question, what does it have to do with African diaspora music? You know, there's a lot of connections, let me just say that. And so this question will come up on the, the next quiz, okay, so as an essay question. But you have some examples to look at, you know, with this poetry, and I'll present some others. But one of the things that we know you know, well, I'll stop right there with that. But I appreciate you all participating Thank you. and, and uh, attending, okay? So let's give everybody a little bit This is my nephew, my, my sister's oldest son. And I'm very proud of him and all the things that he's done with his work. And I just underscore the things you said. Um, you know, it's, it's good to find something, a passion, that will help you get through moments. You know, because we all have these moments. To live long enough, you will have challenges, if you haven't already. Okay, but if you have something that you can develop, it doesn't have to be poetry, it could be writing, it doesn't have to be, it could be music. How many musicians, you know, raise your hand, musicians in the class, okay? And so, uh, you all know, you know, you all know what's happening. But whatever it is your passion, you know, feed it. Feed it, you know, okay? So, anybody have any questions? Any questions before we leave? Okay, have a wonderful day. Thank you. I wish you health and wealth. I wish you health and wealth. Thank you. Feel free, I'll be up here a few more minutes. Good news. Thank you.